Number one, and this is very important, guys, is writing down your dreams. I can't stress this enough. Write down your dreams. Sometimes you might not even think it's significant, but after writing it down, you realize it is, it is and this is going to help you to remember, help you to reflect, and ultimately, if God is speaking to you, you want to make sure that you're saving it so you can remember it. Don't sit there and say, I'm going to remember it. I'll put it down in the morning. No. Here's what often happens. God will speak to you. You'll dream at three in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning. You'll wake up with a dream. You know God is speaking. You're having that reoccurring dream. God is warning you. God is giving symbolism. God is speaking to you in the night. What happens? You wake up, you go back to bed, and you forget the dream. So you need to have a dream journal, a dream notepad. If your phone has notes on it, great. Get your phone notes out and write dream journal up on there. And then listen, you might, now here's the thing. You might have dreams from your human soul, which is scriptural. But I just want you to write down all your dreams, okay? Even if you don't feel like they're necessarily from God, just write them down and see what God would have to say. Because what you're going to find is some dreams that you didn't realize were actually God speaking. God was actually speaking. And when you write those things down, you'll be able to go back over them and see what God was saying. So number one is write them down. Number two is after you write the dream down, you need to test the dream, okay? That's how you interpret it. You need to test the dream. So you need to see is the dream from the Holy Spirit, the human soul, or a demonic spirit. Those are the three sources of dreams. And I've already went over this in last week's video. So go back to last week. I made even 10 minute clips so you can just get the clip on YouTube and find out how to see the source of your dream. I give it very basic, very easy. So go watch those other videos. I won't rehash this tonight for the sake of time, but understand there's three sources of dreams. And the only source that's fully trusted is the Holy Spirit. You cannot trust your human soul. You can obviously not trust the demonic spirit. You can only trust a the Holy Spirit when he speaks in dreams. And so you need to understand that's the only source of information that is good. So basically you need to see what's the origin, where did it come from? You check the content of the dream, you check the fruit of the dream, and then you discern where did this dream? Was this dream God? Was God speaking to me or was it just a human soul dream because I, you know, took medication or had pizza before bed, which is possible to do those things and dream from the soul. So make sure you find out where the dreams come from. This is important because you don't want to receive a dream, write this down from a demon and do what the demon told you to do and not realize that you're following the enemy's plans. Can a demon come and give you a dream and speak to you in a dream? Yes. And you need to be careful that you're not writing down the demon's dream and then following it. Okay. Because many times God's going to give you dreams for direction, for warning, for revelation, for new ministries, for new endeavor endeavors, for relationship advice. God might give you a dream and say, stay out of this relationship. Okay. So God can speak in so many types of ways in dreams. So you need to make sure it's not the devil. Do not listen to demons in dreams. If a demon comes to you in your dream, don't even waste your time writing it down. When you wake up, rebuke it in Jesus name and go forth. Okay. If it tries to tell you to do something, just rebuke it. Okay. Number three, after you write it down, after you test it, is you need to pray about the dream. If you feel this is a dream from God, so now we've written down our dream, we've tested our dream, and we know that this dream came from God, and so now we need to see, is this a dream of warning? Is this a dream of direction? Is this a dream or a message from God? And what we'll do is we'll take our notepad or what we wrote down, and we're going to pray through the dream. And this is simply going through what you wrote down and praying over it to see if the Lord would give you the interpretation or would speak to you through the dream. Now, you might say, obvious, Isaiah, but many of us have never, ever done this, okay? We've never written down a dream and then prayed over it. And God will speak as you pray. If you pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. If you pray in English, pray in English and let the Lord speak to you as you pray over the dream. You might be praying through it, and as you're praying through it, you get the entire interpretation and the whole meaning, and you don't even need to, anything else. You just got it right there. You don't need to ask anybody. You don't need to go anywhere. You got it right there, okay? So remember, God hides stuff on purpose so that we seek him for revelation. Now, Isaiah, why would God hide things in dreams, okay? Why is God giving us dreams of symbolism? Why is God giving us numbers and colors? Why can't God just say, don't be with this person or don't do this? Why did he have to give it to me and symbolizations and all these different mysteries and riddles and all this stuff? The same reason why, and I'm going to give you this for free nugget here tonight. The same reason why you wrap the presents for your kids. Why do you wrap presents for your kids on their birthday or on Christmas? 
And the pure reason is to experience the joy on their face when they unwrap it and they are surprised by what is in the box. There's a mystery and there is an excitement. This is why God hides things in riddles, mysteries, parables, so that those that don't seek him don't receive. Jesus said, I speak in parables so that those that have ears could actually hear. So those that actually seek would know so that the religious people wouldn't understand me. So God wraps these things up like a parent wraps up a gift and so that you would have joy in receiving the revelation. How many know what it's like when you receive a word from God and there's so much joy and excitement and you go, the God of the universe spoke to me and you're passionate and you're excited. God enjoys seeing you excited. So he hides his mysteries so that you'll seek him. Okay. Only write this down. Only seekers receive God's revelation. Lazy people won't. People that aren't willing to pray, aren't willing to write it down, aren't willing to get in these training videos, they're not gonna receive. They're just gonna sit on church on Sunday morning and die on a pew and never advance into the deep things of God. And Paul says, we gotta go deeper in the things of God. And so some of you, I've probably had hundreds of messages from God in dreams, but didn't take the time to unwrap them. So you have a closet full of gifts that are wrapped and you've never opened them up. And here's what you're saying. God, 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 give me more, more, more. And God says, you have a closet full of gifts that you haven't unwrapped and you're asking me for more gifts. And so by these training and teachings and prayer and the word and preaching, we're learning to unlock revelation. So if you don't unwrap them, you'll miss out on the content content of what's in the revelation and one revelation could change your entire life. Let me say that again for all you sitting in the back and you snuck in and you're gonna leave here in five minutes. One revelation could change everything. Guys, my life has changed dramatically because one revelation, one revelation that God loves you, one revelation that God can use you, one revelation that you can pray in the spirit, one revelation that you know you can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. When you get the revelation that you have the power over demons, the power to heal the sick, and the power to preach the gospel, when you get the revelation that you can baptize people in your bathtub, come on somebody, this will change your life. Many people wait their entire life for their pastor to do it. Get the revelation that God wants to speak to you. Does pastor God speak through your pastor? Yes, but God is longing to speak to you through dreams and visions. And it's the joy that God gets when you unwrap the revelation, but only seekers can unlock and unwrap revelation. So we need to be serious about the things of God. Okay, so number three is you need to pray about the dream. Number four, and remember, I'll write these in the description right when the video's over. You need to look for main themes and important details. Okay, write that down. Main themes and important details. In other words, was there a common common theme in the dream? Was there a portion of the dream that kept showing up reoccurring? If you're having reoccurring dreams or something's reoccurring in your dream, like you keep dreaming of falling or your teeth falling out or dreaming of spiders or alligators or snakes. And one of these days, I'm going to do a bunch of common dreams. I don't have time to do it tonight, but I'm going to go through a lot of these dreams and what they mean. But I want to tell you guys this, those things, those themes could be the basis of the message. Maybe you're seeing the same color. Have you guys ever had a dream where you're getting the color blue over and over and over, which in a couple minutes, I'm going to go through colors and numbers, or you're seeing the number five over and over and over. So you need to realize that reoccurring themes, reoccurring content is oftentimes important in distinguishing. So step number four, what is a the theme? What are the reoccurring and what stood out to me? Okay. In a dream, oftentimes there will be something that stands out to you and it's not by chance. So you need to look into the small details and there's a reason why they stood out to you. So if you see a little detail, and there's something folded, something happens in the dream and you just, you see, you remember that detail and you, in your mind you go, why would I remember this detail? It made no sense to me. I had this uh, miraculous, crazy dream, but all I can remember is the detail. The, the power is in the details. The revelation is in the details. So you need to look at the main theme, find important details, okay? And write those down, numbers, write down, okay, this is important in the dream, this was important, so that you can decipher and discern the dream and you could ultimately interpret what God was saying in the dream. Remember, we're hearing messages from God and we're unwrapping them through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, step number five is ask questions about the dream, okay? Ask questions. So questions like, and not limited to, what is the main focus of the dream? Um, and many of your dreams are gonna be about you. So ask yourself, what is the focus and where are you in the dream? Were you an observer a observer in the dream? Many times this indicates a warning dream or a call to intercession. So if you're having a dream where you're observing it from a distance and you're not actually involved, if you guys had those, oftentimes that dream indicates God's warning you about something, God's showing you something about someone or something, or God is calling you to intercede. 
Not every dream you have to tell people, okay? Not every dream you need to post on social media because if you go read the life of Joseph, he got in big trouble sharing his dreams with the wrong people. So be careful what you share because oftentimes God will call you to intercede. If you have a dream of somebody doing something bad or something bad happened to them, you know, or something horrific, don't always go directly to them and say, I had a dream that this happened to you. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will just want you to pray about it, okay? Other times you have a dream about somebody and it's God wanting you to warn them about something, okay? So if you're having dreams and you're seeing someone like get eaten by an alligator or a family member get bit by a snake, pray about it. Say, God, why is this happening? And then you can go into it and figure out why this is happening or why that is happening, okay? Who were the people in the dream? What do they represent? So think about the different people in the dream. What were the names of the people in the dreams? Did you know them in real life? Uh, where did the dream take place? You know, was I in Inside? Was I outside? What was the setting? What was the time period? You know, was this a, in the past? Was I dreaming about my childhood? Was this dream in the future? Is this a future pointing dream? Is this me 30 years from now? So these are all questions. I'm just giving you guys ideas that you need to ask so that you can start discerning and deciphering what the dream meant. And if you read Bible interpretation where they interpreted dreams in the Bible, all these details mean something, okay? These are not direct dreams. These are symbolic revelatory dreams that you have to unlock and unpackage by the power of the Holy Spirit spirit? Were there, were there key actions in the dreams? Okay. Were there colors and numbers that stood out? Were there symbols? Um, what was said in the dream? So what was the conversation about? And these are all things to write down. Okay. And that was number five. Number six is look for scriptural parallels. Write this down. Look for scriptural parallels or linkages. So for instance, if you're in a dream fighting a giant, Go to the Bible and look at all the places that they fought giants. If you're in a dream and you're going through the mountains, read the Bible. What does the mountains mean? If you're crossing a river in your dream, oftentimes that means you're going into a new season. You're going into new territory or a river also represents the supernatural. So crossing over the Jordan, you're going from the natural to the supernatural. You're going from the wilderness to the promise. So look to all these things to the Bible, guys. I'm telling you, let the Bible interpret your dreams. If you're getting biblical symbolism, remember when Jesus taught, he taught in the language of the day. He taught with seeds and with farmers and with fishermen. Now you might say a uh, fisherman's irrelevant, a farmer's irrelevant because you're living in 2021. But back then he spoke in the language of the day. So cell phones, God might show you a cell phone in a dream. Well, there's no cell phones in the Bible, but you can recognize that there is a power parallel there and you can recognize that there's something attached to scripture. Now, how would I do this? Very simple. This is how simple this is. Google, what does the Bible say about this? Okay, so if you're having a dream, you're in the river, what does the Bible say about rivers? You have a dream, you're fighting a giant, what does the Bible say about giants? And this one's gonna happen. Uh, the Bible program on your computer on Google is gonna come up, Bible info, usually I think it's like bibleinfo.com. The first thing that pops up, I use this all the time. It's gonna give you every scripture that relates to that topic, okay? I forgot the website, but you'll find it when you Google it. So Google this to find similar verses, parallel verses, to help you decipher and discern the dream. Okay, that was number six. Number seven, and then we're gonna go into numbers and colors and we're gonna be done, is to ask somebody else to help interpret your dream. If you're at the end of these six steps and you still can't uh, decipher or interpret the dream, you've done everything, you prayed, you believed, but you know it was from God. Now don't go to people with demonic dreams or soul dreams and be like, oh, will you help me discern this? Because it, it, only go to people with God dreams, okay? Well, it's not even, don't waste your time trying to decipher, you know, dreams the devil's giving you or attacking you at night. But if you feel that you have a dream that's powerful from God, you've done the test, you go, I know this from God, I could feel it. Look to someone that you might know that can help you interpret it because sometimes getting somebody else's perspective on the dream can go a very, very, very long way, okay? So you might just need to go ahead and get somebody else's pers perspective. Now, don't be going up to someone that's all religious and lukewarm and gonna tell you that, oh, you shouldn't be trying to interpret dreams and having dreams. Go to somebody that's on fire. Go to somebody that you know. Go to somebody that's trustworthy, okay? Don't let dead, dry, religious believers try to talk you out of what God is speaking to you in dreams because that's oftentimes because the church is not interested in going deep into the spiritual things that the Bible discusses, we write them off and we don't talk about them. So a lot of the stuff you're not gonna hear in the average church, the average believer. So you have to be intentional and in going deep with God and learning about these things. I don't wanna be 70 years old live my entire life and miss all the dreams that God's given me. One third of your life, you're sleeping, okay? Everyone dreams. One third of your life, you're sleeping. I wanna make sure that that one third of my life, I'm actually hearing from God, I'm seeking God. And so we need to make sure that we take these steps to be able to interpret dreams. 